Hi, I'm Steve Latham with the Interdisciplinary Center for Bioethics at Yale, and I'm sitting today with Evie Kendall. Mm -hmm. Evie is teaching in the Newland Summer Institute on Bioethics, and uh, welcome. Thanks for being interviewed. I'm just going to start off with asking you to describe your educational background for us. So my educational background includes a degree in biomedical science, so I started out there. And then I went into more humanities research, like literature, cultural studies, um, philosophy. And from there I thought, uh, what combines these two things? Medical ethics was the obvious choice. Uh, it has a lot of philosophy, but also has that medical uh, connection as well. So I did my master's in bioethics and then started my PhD, which is in cultural studies and bioethics. And in the middle somewhere, I also did a master's of public health and tropical medicine uh, because I was working in the epidemiology department at the time. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, what kind of work are you doing now and where are you doing it? So I'm the new lecturer of bioethics and health humanities at Deakin University, which is a regional university in Victoria, Australia. Mm -hmm. So the kind of work I'm working on at the moment includes your traditional bioethics, so informed consent and research ethics, but also uh, emerging technology, so specialising in artificial room technology and the ethical implications of that, but also things like hostile urban design or hostile architecture as it's called, and the social and ethical implications on particularly homeless populations. Mm -hmm. What kind of things are hostile architecture? Well, the nastiest ones are, of course, things like anti-homeless spikes, uh, which are spikes in the ground to stop homeless people from sleeping in public spaces. But there's also other designs that you might see that you may not immediately recognise as being hostile, like sloping window sills so people can't sit, and having bars in the middle of park benches so people can't lay down. So a lot of things like that. It also includes things like studs on public sort of benches so that people can't skateboard in public. That's another hostile um, <laughs> architectural design. Okay. Uh, so what are you teaching here in the summer program? So this year I'm teaching uh, a couple of different seminars. The first is the genetics, so ethical implications of genetic technology. And the second is reproductive bioethics. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, what are some ethical implications of genetics that you're talking about with the students? So we had a few seminars on CRISPR, Cas9 and gene editing and also things like pre-implantation genetic diagnosis so it's another really popular uh, sort of genetic technology at the moment and uh, moving forward we're going to be doing some really exciting stuff so sort of predicting the future and what might be available so more extreme gene editing and things like can we do human cloning and what can what are the limits of our sort of scientific development and also what are the ethical implications if we pursue some of these paths terrific so you have taught here how many summers now uh four four <laughs> yep <laughs> so why do you keep coming back there's a lot of variety here i get to teach something different every year which is really exciting um, but mostly because i get to meet so many wonderful students from all over the world with different sort of backgrounds, varying levels of expertise, uh, and also the faculty that are here are, are some of the most diverse uh, group of faculty that you'll find anywhere. So I get to meet bioethicists from all over the world that I wouldn't otherwise get to see. <laughs> Have you worked on any projects with anyone you've met here? Yes, uh, Zohar Liederman and I are published in an editor collection that I put together last year that was looking at teaching medicine and medical ethics using popular culture. So uh, that was a really interesting project and I think he was talking about uh, using, well, having family present during CPR and how that's actually represented in television and I was talking about how medical students learn from House and ER, these kind of shows. So it was a really fun project to work on. That's great. And he is from Israel and yep. has been getting his doctorate in bio, he's a physician in Israel and he's been yep. getting his doctorate in bioethics from Singapore yep. and you would probably not have met anywhere else. Correct. It's, a, it's an interesting feature of bioethics that very often a bioethicist is the only one at their university. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I agree with you. It's really fun to be here and meet people who do what we do from all over the world. It's yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Thank you so much you. for agreeing to be interviewed. It was Thank pretty you. painless, right? <laughs> More or less. All right, good. Thanks a lot. Thank you.